mommy, I need more stickers. Why? Why do you need more stickers? Because I'm giving them away to school. Why are you giving away all your stickers? Like, what is this, a whole currency system that you're running? <laughs> and, and why am I the bank for it? <laughs> for me, it was Pokemon cards, so I understand. Oh. Welcome to The Defense Never Rests with Morgan and Akins, your monthly dose of uncommon sense about all things legal and some that are not. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this episode of The Defense Never Rests. I'm joined by Wendy today. Hey, Wendy. Hey, Megan. We have a very special episode today. We are doing a Mother's Day episode, which we did like a few years ago um, with you and some other people we had on your moms, which I loved. I love doing that. Um, but today we're like taking a little pivot and we're doing like a, a Mother's Day episode because this is your first Mother's Day as as a mom. And we're super excited for you. And you had this idea of bringing on, you know, two, two friends of yours, Victoria and Doreen, to talk about, you know, their experiences as mothers throughout and balancing work and being a mom. And uh, you were kind of came to me with, with the idea of being like, you know, I think it'd be great to have them on. And, and you were like candid about it. You're like, and I could use some advice. Yeah. <laughs> Plus they're in our space or at least yes. in, my, in my space, you know, insurance, defense, risk management, um, you know, workers' compensation. So you, we've all felt, you know, the same pains along the way and we deal yes. with them every day too. Yeah. And, and it, and it's always evolving and changing. And we're like, we're always like kind of have juggling all these balls in the, in the air between, you know, work and home and life and ourselves. So, um, I think it, it great idea, perfect timing. So with that, let's bring them in. Good morning, Victoria and Doreen. Welcome to the defense and FRS. I'm so happy to have you today. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How about you? Great. Great. Um, so I'm so happy Wendy, Wendy reached out to you and she has this, I, she had this idea. She's like, let's do a mother's day podcast. And I have two awesome guests. So I'm so happy. Thank you, Wendy, for having coming up with the idea and reaching out to Doreen and Victoria and having them come on. And, you know, we're here to talk about, you know, today we're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about you first, but, um, we're here just to talk about like, you know, kind of what it's, what it's like for us and the challenges of being like a working professional mom and like kind of our tips and how we make it work and how it doesn't work. And Wendy and I had talked about this ahead of time when he's like, I'm looking for tips. I'm really looking for tips. <laughs> and so we're here to help Wendy. <laughs> these two, I was going to just put this out there. I mean, I've known Victoria and Doreen for a very long time and especially recent. So they're more than just clients, they're friends. And I especially like talk to each of them about my trials and you know, tribulations of having a brand new seven month old baby and going back to work and things that happen. So um, it's great. And it's great to have people like that out there, you know, especially in this industry. And when I say this industry, we do insurance defense, we do handle claims, you guys are in the risk management area. Um, so that's actually even more particular than just in general, just being a, a mom unto itself, you know, it comes yeah. along with a lot of wow. the billables. From the attorney yes. end, which I was it, saying, you know, before we got on, I've been Doreen because Doreen was a defense uh, workers' compensation attorney for before I was. I've known her, you know, I watched her in court and learned what to do as an attorney <laughs> when I was brand new. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, good. I, I need to write that down. I, I like that. I like that. I need to say that when I, my case is called. <laughs> Well, you know what, what's funny, and I'm kind of like jumping ahead a little bit, but I remember, you know, be before I had like my my older daughter, and you know, I was doing the same thing I'm doing now, like working at a defense firm, and I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, how on earth am I going to build these hours, make these hours, and then do all the and have a baby? Like, how? <laughs> and I was like, and it just it just, I just did it. Like, it just like, you just didn't have a choice. So I was like, you just made it work. And I was just like, I remember talking to one of my friends and be like, how do you do it? She's like, I don't know. You just become really like just a lot more efficient than you were. Um, which is funny though. Cause Wendy, you were always, you're always pretty efficient. So I, I, I don't know how you've perfected the process. Cause you're always, a, you're like a goer. So <laughs> all a smoke screen. <laughs> you just make it appear that way. And that's all. <laughs> Some clients, you know, and I've had this before, you know, they're like, they're up at like five. I've had sometimes before five o'clock in the morning, you know, emailing, calling, they want to get done, whatever like that. And um, 
Victoria, thank God you're not like that. <laughs> no, I'm not like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm up there and I'm working that early, but I'm not like that. You're right. So, <laughs> um, well, so before before we dive in, because I, I, I want I want everyone listening knowing who who we're talking to. So let's start with you though, Victoria. So you know, Wendy was saying she's she's known you for for years, um, you, and you know, you you're an adjuster at, at Prime Flight, correct? Uh, I'm the director of workers' compensation, okay. so okay, um, I handle all of the comp claims for our company. Okay. Um, and one thing I like to talk to all my guests about is, you know, how you got, got there. Um, because our, you know, the, our, our paths to, you know, where we are in claims or as attorneys or any, it, it's just, we all bob and weave in a different way. I mean, the path everyone takes is a little different. I'm always really curious to see and hear about each, each person's path. So Doreen, you, you can already start thinking about this. Cause I'm going to ask ask you this next so <laughs> she got the benefit she gets to hear the question before the question but uh I'm just curious like what what was your path like how, how did you get to where you are now so I graduated in 2008 which was a hard time to find a job um and so <laughs> okay so you know and so um SMS had owned Prime Flight at the time and they had called me back um, and it was supposed to be a temporary three-month gig which worked out perfect because I was going to go to graduate school to be a marriage and family therapist. Um, while I was there I really enjoyed working and then um, I knew a girl who worked in the risk department who was quitting and I thought this sounds really interesting. So before the job was even posted, I had my resume ready to go, um, took it over to Jeff, who Wendy also knows, um, and the rest is history, and I've been sucked in the claims ever since, um, and it's just my niche. I had no idea this was even, you know, a possibility of something that I'd be interested in exploring, and I love, I love how sometimes, you know, like, I love how every day is different, but it kind of follows the same process as well. Um, and it's just, it's just been a wonderful career for me. Um, and then once um, Prime Flight was sold, I've um, risen up to director of workers comp and oversee our claims and being more involved in the litigation pieces. It's really interesting. And I've learned so much and just really enjoy it every day. Well, one thing I, I can't help but mention though, you know, I don't think what you do is all that different from being a marriage and family therapist. <laughs> I mean, those skills probably really come into play. Listening, problem solving. Yes, they do come into play. So maybe this was just, you know, this is my niche and I just love it. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I, and I, I just, I love hearing, you know, the, those types of stories. Cause it, like I too had a major pivot. Like I, I w thought I was going to go to medical school and then, then I ended up going to law school. Um, I had a little bit of break in between and that's how I found myself where there, but it's just funny, like the things that you pick up along the way and like what you think you're going to do and how you just like, kind of, it turns and you end up doing something totally different, but still so, those skills are very complementary to what, you know, what you, where you end up landing. So how about you, Doreen? I know, I know you were, you know, practicing attorney for, for some time and you've gotten out of the the billing grind, so to speak. But yeah. <laughs> yes, screaming, shouting for joy. <laughs> so um, after working, oh, let's see, litigating for two decades, um, it was time. It was time. I that billable grind. Um, and you know what? And when they say that when COVID hit, people re-evaluated their lives. They're, that was that time for re-evaluation. So sitting at home, working, trying to grind out those same billable hours that we had to prior to going into COVID and we're in, you know, you got to drive, you got to travel, you got to do some things, but sitting in the seat all day, it, it was Hmm, let's say a motivating factor to do something different. Mm -hmm. So um, I, one of my clients that I've had for years and one that I truly enjoyed working with was SEPTA. Um, and so, you know, dealing with the adjusters, dealing with the folks in house, um, they were just great people. Mm -hmm. So when the opportunity arose, I went ahead and took it. Um, so I am currently the director of workers comp in FILA and I have not looked back to those <laughs> billable hours. So. <laughs> so it all goes into tandem. So I'm working Worked in workers' comp for years and years. So, and as I indicated, SEPTA was my client. So I, I was able to bridge the gap. I'm still learning, but I'm enjoying the ride. 
I just well, said babies and billables do not go hand in hand. Oh, it's a rough, it's, it, it, it does. It can. <laughs> it does? It, just, <laughs> it might just be a different road in different paths. That's all. <laughs> well, so Doreen, let, let me ask you this. So when, when you were in private practice, is that when you were practicing is when, when you had your, your, your children, correct? That is correct. So yeah. I have a 25 year old and a 15 year old. So, uh, yeah. So yep. starting out, uh, yeah, the, starting out was very difficult, but by the se- time the second one <laughs> came along and I was in the billable practice, you know, I, I realized that uh, help was needed, support was needed, and it's okay to reach out and it's okay to set boundaries and, and, and be flexible and do something different. So, yeah, I mean, so I, I do kind of, I hate the saying, like it takes a village, but it, it, it totally does um and what I've found is at least amongst like my my circle is no one like there's no hard feelings if you're asking for help because everyone understands that you you need that help like it happened to me just yesterday I had to travel four hours out for you know something but my you know my one kid had something the other kid had something my husband was in his office so I'm like, well, crap, how am I going to do this? So then it's just like, you start calling the friends and be like, so I need your help today. <laughs> but you know, you know, in a week or two, it's, they're going to need your help. So it's, it's kind of okay as, you know, as long as you're all, everyone's willing to help each other when, because we get it. Like there's, there's those times that, you know, you just, you, you need to call and you need to ask the favor. <laughs> well, I said, I'm like, my, I'm going to give a shout out to my mother-in-law, Susan Murphy. Because I said it takes a Susan Murphy to raise <laughs> a child because she's actually going to be watching my son tomorrow while we lay out uh, 14 yards of mulch in our yard. <laughs> uh, Bryson's a little too young to be doing that. But, um, you know, Victoria, I always think about you too. Like, and I know Megan, your families like live farther away. Victoria, you live, moved to Colorado during the pandemic. And it's like, I don't, you know, it's, it's great that you have friends and people that you can rely on that's yes. that are closer. It's very important. We found our circle here. Um, I really didn't have a lot of mom friends back in Tennessee. My um, my best friend is back there, but her children are older. Um, so we were at two different seasons. Um, so here being in the thick of it with moms who are in the same stage that I'm in, it's great because like you said, you have that help and you know, you help, they help if you just need a break at the playground, they're watching the kid. Or like you said, if you need help, it's like they're right there for you. And it's good to be the same for them as well. So, uh, so Victoria, so you moved mid in the middle of the pandemic to a whole new place where you didn't know anyone with your kids. Uh, yeah. So we moved okay. to Colorado in December of 2021. <laughs> so, uh, my family is based in St. Louis and my sister's in Chicago. Um, so I had moved to Tennessee kind of on my own to go to college. Um, my husband is a national native, so there was some family there. Um, but, um, his mom, unfortunately had passed away. And so, um, that was part of our reason. I think realizing life is short and the life that we wanted, not just for ourselves, but for our son kind of was that catalyst to move to Colorado, even at that crazy time. Um, like you said, with family in the middle of pandemic, but it's been a really great decision so far. Uh, so how old, how old was your son when you moved? Um, he was two. Okay. Yeah. So. I'm just curious. So what was, cause you know, you're going, you're going there. We're still in the middle of a pandemic, you know, like, I mean, I guess we're out of like the potting situation that everyone was in before then, but like, what was your method to be like, okay, I need to find people. I need to find my people. <laughs> well, it was just, it was a whirlwind and I'm usually a planner and like, I would be the person like on vacation. I would have like notes of where we're going to go, like all, everything is just like timed out. Like, and that makes me feel good. And so we sold our house in two seconds, literally the first (laughs) day it was out. Um, and so that was great. And then, you know, this is in the middle of the crazy housing market. We gave ourselves two weeks to come out here and find a house. Um, that happened luckily. Um, and we ended up in a great place. And when you may not believe this about me, but I'm actually like super introverted. (laughs) Um, so it was really hard. So it forced me to come out of my shell a little bit um, and just kind of realize like, hey, like just be friendly to, um, you know, someone and maybe you'll spark up a conversation. Um, And that's actually how I met my best friend here. Um, Luckily, my mom's flight was 
delayed because of the crazy snows that we get here all the time. So <laughs> she loved Garden of the Gods. And so we went back there and I saw a mom with two little kids. Um, I knew one was probably definitely under one. One was about my son's age and she was struggling to get his gloves on. And I just said, Hey mama, I want you to know it's hard. Oh. We struggle with the same thing, but you're doing such a good job that you've got these mm -hmm. babies out here in this beautiful place. And we just talked. And then like, when we left, we're both like, Hey, we're not weirdos. Like, do you want to exchange phone numbers? And so like <laughs> we did, and we've been like best friends for like the whole time that they lived here and they moved here from Atlanta. So it was a very similar place, like from, yeah. from Nashville. Um, and so it's been kind of fun to have someone go through that change of your children growing and moving away from family kind of along the same timeline. Um, and that's just, just kind of coming out of my shell is what I've just really had to do. Yeah. That's awesome. I know that even that story made me tear up a little bit though. Cause I was like, Oh, she, that mom probably really appreciated it. <laughs> she does. Trust me. I, I, I know. I mean, I don't even know this woman. I haven't heard this story before, but I'm like, I know that mom appreciates it. <laughs> it's hard. I feel like as a mom, you're always hoping that you're doing like the best for your kids and you're doing a good job. And just to hear that, even from that stranger, that's just like, Hey mama, keep going. It just makes you like this little pep in your stuff and a smile on your face. Yeah. And it's just like, it's a nice warm story too. I, like I love the, you know, it really was a big, it was like a beginning of a very organic friendship, you yes. know? So I love that. Dory, uh, does it feel like, yeah, even though you have older kids, does it feel like this, it was like yesterday that they were little that you're doing all this juggling or. It does. It does. I mean, you know what, even though uh, they're older needs change over time. So like while in the beginning, you're like worried about sleep or worried about sickness, then it evolves to different needs. So it's like, there's always something that you're either, I'm not going to say struggle with, but have something to deal with and, you know, having to learn to be flexible <laughs> with, or looking for that support for. So while I'm beyond diapers, I'm beyond, but now I'm chasing track meets and football sessions. So it's, it's over the years, I realized it's always going to evolve. And so when I hear moms talking about, you know, oh, I can't wait. And I always say, you know, don't wish the time away. Enjoy your season that you're in mm -hmm. because you know what? It'll be something different later on. So that's what I learned from the first one when I was super young having my kid, where I swear I wished the time away. It was like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till you're done bottles. Oh my gosh, I can't wait until you're out of diapers. Oh my God, you know, through each stage so my second one I learned to enjoy each stage knowing that it's always just going to be something different so I'm always encouraging mothers just you know just be in the moment it's okay yeah. to be in the moment and enjoy wherever you are and it's difficulties and it's highlights the whole nine so I agree because I look back you know, my, my daughters are eight and ten and we have a whole new host of issues now and I look back and I like miss the times that they were like I like Wendy I miss a seven month old like mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily miss a two-year-old though three -year -old. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little bit of a pain <laughs> that's a really challenging time yes. <laughs> I got a little time for that <laughs> but the but the oh it, like you just go back but the, you just go back and like the the struggles then and I was like oh like, I, I mean, it, it felt so, so hard and like now feels so hard. And I know I'll miss like this in, in two years and then I'll miss that in two years after that. So, you know, what you say, Doreen, is so, so true. Just, you need to like embrace the, the time you're in and not wish it away because yeah, I, I definitely, I miss when they were just all little and cuddly and they just fall asleep on you and yeah. And they give you hugs <laughs> and kisses. And now, you know, I'm just Uber. No, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I'm literally just an Uber all the time and a, an ATM. Like, yes, can you, yes. can you, mommy, I need more stickers. Why? Why do you need more stickers? Cause I'm giving them away to school. Why are you giving away all your stickers? Like, what is this? A whole currency system that you're running? <laughs> <laughs> and, and why am I the bank for it? <laughs> I, I'm so have, for me, it was Pokemon card. So I understand. Oh, that's funny. You just said that because I have a, a really good friend of mine. Um, and she was telling me her son came home with like a, a, a whole like stack of cash. And her son is like eight. And I'm like, what? And she said, yeah, he's selling his cards, his Pokemon cards at like the playground at recess. I'm like, well, you got an entrepreneur on your hands. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't my, my older daughter did that too. She was selling bracelets 
And then the teachers found out and they shut down her bracelet business. They're like, no, 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 you can't have a four cash bracelet business on the playground. <laughs> and she was mad. I was like, I'll open up you an Etsy shop. It's fine. <laughs> you can just do it there. Right. <laughs> you know, so what are, what are going back to, you know, when, because I'm, th- I'm thinking of Wendy right now. So going back okay. to when, like, <laughs> well, when, you know, when your, your kids were, were little, were there any, um, tips or, or, or systems that you had in place that help make things like run, run smoothly. So you could work full time and, and, you know, also be present. Cause that, that's the stuff you hear. Like you need to be present. You need to be present. You need to be present. And then like, you're on your phone you're like, well, I'm not present, but like, man, I need a minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> but are there, any, is there anything that worked besides like calling for help, um, which we all know is like the number one thing. Uh, but is there anything else that, you know, you kind of worked in your systems to help balance, like balance things? Well, for me, I always say now looking back, yeah. just be flexible, mm-hmm. be flexible. Like our roles at home change, um, you know, cause there, there's points in time where in, I guess when I, before I had my second child, my first one was older, I would be the one who cooked all the time. I'd be the one, you know, you had certain roles in the home or what have you, but you know what, when the second little one came and I was too tired to do anything and, and work and, you know, life got hectic. Now my husband cooks, right? And so he's now the cook of the family or, um, so who's going to do the pickups? What's going to happen? There was a point in time in our lives actually shortly after my mom passed because she was our big help and I was like I'm moving up the street I don't care what you say but we have to move around mom's house because I need help and so I mean for years that's what we did for a few years that's what we did um and when she passed unexpectedly we had to figure out oh my god what are we going to do our support system was gone and so I mean we were so we had to unite together I mean it was to the point where we had split we called it split shifts and believe it or not my husband would go into work at like five o'clock in the morning and I would say babe I have a 10 o'clock hearing so I need to leave by such and such time so he would come home and he would relieve me so that I could go to my hearings handle my hearings or what have you and then I'll be like well I can make it back home maybe by two o'clock after my hearings and then I'd run home and then he would run back to work so I mean, granted, we were able to have that flexibility. We we're blessed to have that flexibility at the time, but it, it, we had to make it work. And it was just like open communication about what you can and cannot do and what you're struggling with. And so, and just talking to people and just allowing them to give me ideas on what I could possibly do and thinking out the box just really helped my family. Yeah. I mean, that is incredible. And I'm just going to put this out there for, you know, Victoria Beggin. And the Pennsylvania comp world, we had before the pandemic, I mean, right up until the shutdown, you had these call of the list. So like everybody has to show up and different courts had diff- different judges throughout the state. Some started at 830. There's one judge that uh, even though said you started at a certain time, you had to get there like super early or you're going to be waiting there all day. Like mm-hmm. she's st- you were like fighting each other to get there. And there are certain people, obviously, we're not naming names here. It's not, this is not about shaming people who can never get their butt on time to court. You would be sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And you're like, are you going to come? Are you, your case is getting called? I would like to, I have worked other work to do. I got another depth to do. And Doreen, you were always there on time. You were always there for your cases and things like that. So you're my hero. This whole shift thing. I mean, my uh, my other half goes in early. I mean, regardless, he works. And I do the whole taking my son to school. He does the pickup. But I mean, if I had to get to court, I mean, there are times I have to get to court. And I actually have to have, again, Susan, I'm going to tell her that I'm giving her a big shout out here. My mother-in-law come over just to take my kid to daycare. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you never know how, the, right now we're just sort of in flux. But now that's a huge, that, that's huge. Yeah. <laughs> How about, how about you, Victoria? Um, so we're also blessed, like what Doreen said. So my husband works for himself um, and I work from home. So he takes Wyatt while I work during the day. So we, we kind of have that shift thing going on. Um, but I guess my piece of advice would be just, would be to, 
don't want to say lower your expectations, but like change your expectations and just kind of learn to go with the flow. Like it's, that's one of the pieces of motherhood that's been really good for me. Cause I would say I was semi-rigid and, you know, my house had to be show ready all the time. Like mm-hmm. things had to be certain ways and now things are just not like that. And there's probably 500 trains in my living room right now. And there's dinosaurs all over probably the bathroom floor. And (laughs) sometimes it drives me crazy, but like, it is what it is. And it's that season that we're in. Um, like you, like we were talking earlier. Um, and that would be my piece for Wendy too, is like, you don't know when that next season is going to come and when it's going to change. And even though it's like really hard, like you don't know when like the last time you're going to get to do like that thing with your baby is yeah. and like that's so it's so hard like looking back like that's what gets me emotional about it so it's like you know just just really enjoy that time and put those systems in place and those friendships in place that you that you can to just like make the most of this time because it is fleeting it really is yeah yeah like I, I I remember just recently my my younger one who's eight like she doesn't like to like she, she doesn't like to pick up a book and read. Like she's just not, she's not that kid, but she picked up all these like baby kind of books and wanted to read them to me. And it's like, what I wanted to say is like, no, like go get a chapter book. And I was like, you know what? Read Hug Machine to me, go ahead, be a teacher. And it was, but it was like nostalgic to me too. Cause I'm like, I read this book to you all the time. <laughs> and it's so easy for you to read now, but I'm like, it's like one you're reading. I don't care what you're reading. I don't care if you read a user manual, if you're reading, but then she was pretending to be the teacher and reading the, and I was like, okay, well, the, I'm like, it, it kind of was a crossover of like, okay, well, we're, we're touching back into those things that we did when you were really little, but we're exercising some skills that you need to work on right now. Um, and, you know, you're having fun doing it too. And you're still doing the like make believe, you know, type, type stuff, which I hate when that goes away because that makes me really sad. <laughs> That's where we're at now. And it's really fun to like see how he views the world and like how he sees things and pieces it together and it's just really fun to interact in that way and give that make-believe play and just really connect that way with my son. Do you guys think that now with COVID changing the scheme of how you handle claims I mean because that has changed in, in some way at least from what I've seen uh, definitely I know because I work on both of your fi- both of you guys files <laughs> and you know the way we go uh, you know how we how we work now we're both like I mean we're doing this via zoom has that helped you guys at all being, you know, handling like raising your kids or is it in some ways hurt, hurt that as well? It was, I was remote before. So for me in that regard, I don't feel as much of a change. But like you said, there's a, a way we handle claims differently. But for me personally, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, it really hasn't been that much of a change for me personally. I guess for me differently, because when COVID hit, we went fully remote um, since the courts were remote. Um, it, it was a I'm going to say a blessing and a curse at the same time. Blessing that I was able to be there with my kid and to assist and to help him adjust or and what have you do the schoolwork and be a part of um, his life more um, intimately. Um, However, when you're me personally, um, I like to say that I often have cabin fever after a day of being locked in the house. So it was a little bit more difficult for me because I wasn't used to being at home all the time. So I guess personality adjustment. Um, So it it was great that I was able to assist, but I'm not so sure if I did, I weaked out one too many times, right? Because I was stuck at home or what have you. But I have to say now that I've moved into a different role and it's more hybrid. It works better for us um, in that sense. And now with kids being sick, there's more flexibility. So that heightened angst, you know, about your kid being sick or having to make adjustments after COVID, I feel like, well, you know what, if I could deal with that and go through that and have to be flexible, anything else is easier. Yeah. I mean, I look back on that, that like the actual like shutdown time it, and like, well, that was crazy. Like that was nuts. I don't like, I don't even know how we survived, but then I also have some nostalgic feelings about it too. But being where we are now, um, I, I'm very happy that, you know, my kids get off the bus 
and they come home and I'm here. I don't have to worry. Like, I don't have to arrange for a sitter. Like before, you know, we had like, we had a nanny share with the neighbor. Like we had all these things in place, but now I'm like, no, they get to come home and I'm here. Um, and my watch just started talking to me. Um, (laughs) but I, I I like that. I'm like, they get home and like mom's home and, you know, I can ask them about their day and you know, we could do all those things that I, I kind of did when I was a kid, when I, you know, because my mom wasn't working. Um, and it's kind of nice. However, on the flip side, by a 345, like my productivity on the work side is not very high. Like I have to, it's like a low hanging fruit or telephone call time because I can't write a report or think very deeply into something because I have kids doing homework, them asking me quite like there's a lot going on. So you know, that part is, is difficult, but I'm like, well, I, but I do think overall, I think they'll look back on it fondly to remember like, oh, they came home every day and, you know, mom was there to help and, you know, ask about my day and, you know, whatever, whatever fourth grade drama is going on. I can't be a sounding board for. <laughs> well, I'll say this even before I had a kid and before the pandemic, I never, I don't miss the, uh, there's certain doctors that would be like, oh, we're going to have a deposition at nine o'clock at night. I'm like nine o'clock at night. I don't start my day at noon or like in the afternoon. I'm like, what? <laughs> like you're not that important of a doctor that we're going to go out. It was actually on the, on the other side, but I do have one on our side, on the defense side that would do that kind of stuff. I mean, I can remember one deposition being there until like after 11 o'clock at night. Oops. And there was an attorney, the other side attorney. He had, and this guy was not a young attorney at all, had a yellow notepad, had his questions written out and had a little like slash next to it. So if the doctor didn't answer like the question that he wanted, he wouldn't put a check mark next to it. But if he answered, he put a check mark, but he wouldn't move on off of that. And I'm like, I had to say to the guy, I said, listen, I have to go to bed. I have to be in court <laughs> the next morning. You know, I'm like, what are you doing? Like, move. he answered the question like seven times. We're moving on. We're not asking that again. You know, that kind of stuff. And now, I mean, e- even with a kid, I'm still like, no, no, we're not, we're not doing these nine o'clock devs that could be there until 11 o'clock. But the nice thing is, is that for the remote part, even like the ones that like at dinner time or whatever, you don't have to go travel out in rush hour, get home yeah. at eight o'clock, teach your dinner and stuff like that. So I do find those things kind of nice about the change of the pandemic. But one thing I think I, I've I've found, or at least I, I don't feel sorry about is ma- like making stricter bra- boundaries for, for myself with like work versus family time. And I feel like pre-kids, I would let it bleed together. Like, Yep. Work on a Saturday. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Work on a Sunday. Yeah, I'm there. You know, oh, I'll be in the office. Till I, and like, I think as soon as there was a, someone else who really needed me, I was like, no, like, I, I'm not doing that. And if I, if, if it's something that absolutely has to get done, or we have a trial starting, sure, there are exceptions to the rule. But no, I like, I, I, it, do I need to work on Saturday? No. So I'm not going to, I got other, I got other more important things to do that day. And just setting those boundaries and being like, clear with yourself about what what they are I think really um like makes you feel less guilty too you're like no like <laughs> and this is my time to for be like with my kids or my family and this is I have this other time set aside for for work was, was it hard for for you to like instill those boundaries for yourself I was like I was actually kind of opposite like I thought that being like that was like what made you like this hard worker and I wanted to like you know even though my son was you know, not here yet. Like I, you know, I was going to be that mom and show him that it was actually my boss, Alan, who's incredible. Um, he is, he's really the one who like kind of taught me the work-life balance because like I, um, so with Wyatt, I had preeclampsia and I was admitted to the hospital about a week and a half before he was born. And like, I'm working there, I'm, you know, and I'm doing all this stuff and I'm like, I'm only going to take two weeks off. And like, Alan just was like, you only get this time like once and you really need to enjoy it. And it really just like, you know, made me step back and realize like how important that work-life balance is. And I, like I said, I was lucky to have an employer who recognizes that and kind of like made me, um, I don't know. And, and I think that made me a better mom, like realizing that, you know, we do need those boundaries like that in our lives so that we can be good parents and we can be good employees. It's just, I feel like having that balance makes me happier 
and able to give more to work and Wyatt and my husband too and in and, and my friendships and, and things like that. Yeah. How about you, Doreen? So years ago, true story, um, one of those cattle call hearings where, <laughs> you know, all the attorneys are hanging out. I called it the peanut gallery where we just sit and watch everyone's um, mm-hmm. cases go by. So I learned what boundary meant. Um, a female attorney, she objected to a late night death. And I'm sitting there just listening to the arguments. And it wasn't even that late. I'd say like maybe six o'clock or what have you. And she was like, I have children and I want to be present. I mean, the whole argument with respect to having kids wanting to be present in their lives. And the judge ordered the opposing counsel to get another date and to get another time and for it not to take place that late. I was like, what? We could do that? You know, that was that. I'm thinking to myself, I didn't even know you could do that. (laughs) (laughs) That was that shining moment where, and I was like, wait a minute, I get to set boundaries. So I ran back to um, the office and I asked the female partner, I said, you know, um, what I just saw in court, she objected to a late night debt. I was like, can I do that? And so she, <laughs> listen, I prefer to ask for permission and go down the wrong road. So, uh, so she was like, yes. She was like, I don't see why not. She was like, listen, you control your calendar the way you see fit. And so are you kidding me? When I Heard that you didn't have to tell me anything more. It was to the paralegals, please do not schedule a deposition after 4 p.m. unless you have my permission. Like I like set up true box boundaries because my goal was to be a part of my family and to know my kids, to know their woes, to know their complaints, all of it. So um once I had that permission, I didn't look back. I absolutely yeah. didn't look back. And so, yes, dude, I had to make concessions along the way. Yes. But, you know, life at 6 p.m. on the road somewhere out in East Jablit didn't have to occur for me anymore. So you didn't um, have to do that nine o'clock p.m. deposition. <laughs> was not going to happen when that is true by the way i mean adore you is exactly the doctor i'm talking about like nine o'clock p.m i'm like get out of here i did turn around and agree to a 6 a.m telephone debt like way back when but other yes but otherwise i was not going to be in anyone's doctor's office that early in the morning or that late at night so (laughs) okay um so Wendy, I'm going to throw it to you though. So, you know, cause you're, you're in this now, you know, seven months. So what, what have you learned along the way as to balancing your own, your own schedule? Uh, because like, I don't know, before, before you had your son, like you're, you were, you're go, you're go, 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 go. Um, and- I'm a road warrior. Yeah. I never, I, I think before, before the pandemic shut down, I hadn't even been in the state of Pennsylvania for like more than two days. I, I thought about that. I was like, wow, oh. I had like, I actually had flights that I had to cancel when that shutdown happened. I thought, I thought about that like a couple of days ago. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out a little bit. <laughs> As these guys will know, I mean, it's, um, and it's part of, so when I, this is the hard part, when I was coming back from my, I was going to say my maternity leave, except I worked during maternity. Yes, and you worked quite a bit. <laughs> hardest thing is this phone. The phone is, I mean, even at the hospital, I'm checking, like I'm checking emails and things like that. And that's, that's on me. That, that, a lot of that is on me. That's not because I, you know, it's just, I'm, I have to be on 24 seven, but um, I was going to say, I, I did want to share this story. I had, I had known this for a year. I had a huge, a huge trial and because of the amount of defendants in the case, it, we got a date certain a year ago. Uh, it would be, we knew it was going to start on February 6th. I didn't know I was going to be pregnant and I didn't know I was going to have a baby when this all happened, but coming back out of, you know, back to work full time, putting my kid in daycare, which was heartbreaking. I had to deal with all of, we we were going to trial and this is a huge, huge, huge case. Like it's not just, you know, I mean, I would say that every case is small, but this had a lot of, a lot of moving components. 
and they scheduled, they wanted to do a last minute mediation, which was the third mediation in this case. And they wanted to do it with a judge who is here in Philadelphia, but happened to be on vacation in Florida and was willing to have a mediation for this case, but everybody had to go to Florida. Now in January, that would be a dream come true. That would be like, I'm, I'm in, let's go, call the client. Let's go down to Florida. Let's go jo join this mediation. But I have a brand new baby, you know, right. I, I'm like, there is no way I could get on a plane and get down there. Um, I, you know, talked to my client, talked to everybody. I had I know, my partner's awesome. She went down, you know, said, do not worry about it. But it was really stressful for me. Like, I should be there, you know, I'm lead counsel in this huge case. You know, I mean, even on Saturday night, we we got a babysitter to come, um, aka grandparents, but still a babysitter to come watch our 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 sons just so we could have a meal out. And I'm on the phone with the these attorneys, you know, on a Saturday night. My partner got on and she was at a funeral, you know, and those are things that we, you know, we we make exceptions and you, know, you say set boundaries. Yeah, we have to set boundaries, but sometimes it's just hard. Yeah. It's hard to know where each bound, the boundaries could be different every day. That's what yeah. I'm finding. Yeah. It's hard to where you, you're going to draw that line, you know, and, and probably in that instance, like trials like that don't happen all the time. So sometimes, like I said, like sometimes, yes, you have to work on, like I have to work on a weekend because it, there's something that's making it, it that, that needs to happen, but you know, and in that instance, like you, if you have this giant case that you go into trial, like there are some exceptions to the rule, but it's hard, you know, it's really, really hard. And then you're probably like mad at, like, I don't know, I would be like, not mad, but I'd be like upset, you know, be like, you're upset that you're not present where you want to be for the, the work, but then you're upset that you're taking the time away from the time that you need, like having, you know, having a nice dinner out <laughs> with your other half and getting a night away from baby, you know, and then you're on the phone dealing with work. Like, it's just like, it's exhausting. You know, mm -hmm. you're getting pulled in so many directions and you, you need some time to reset yourself. Oh yeah. And then it's one of those things like, you know, you think about like, you know, he's starting to get more on a schedule, but back then, like in the beginning when you come and he's still, you know, he gets sick. I was just saying he just like got over a double ear infection. Things throw off your schedule. So like, oh yeah, we'll be, I, I'm thinking like, oh, this is great. Like I'm on a roll here. He's sleeping at the night, maybe wakes up once. I'm okay. I get some sleep. And then the next day it's done. Like, it, you know, you have to, and it's like, I haven't slept in like a week. And I'll, I'll be looking at you, both Victoria and Doreen know. I'm like, oh, oh my God. I'm like, do I have baby brain? Do I, am I looking at this case right? Like, yeah, 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 I am. I am. <laughs> so I, I'm very, I, I am, I think I've showed Doreen my chart. I am very much on like, I have some, because I run three different jurisdictions and I run a general liability and a comp practice. And I have a team. I'm not saying I do this by myself. My team is awesome. But to keep track of all this, because I pride myself, like, you got to call me about a case. I'm not going to be sitting here like, what, what, what's going on? I, I keep track of, I have, a, I have summaries of like, and it's a, it's a working document of all the files. So Victoria just actually asked me about like, can you give me a list of like our files that I do PA New York and New Jersey for? And I'm like, boom, here you go. Drop. Like, that's what I, I still try to, that's my goal to just to keep that up. You know, it's hard some days, but I'm like, I, I still try to make that happen. Wendy, can I say the best advice that I've ever received from someone was give yourself grace. <laughs> Mm -hmm. as you go through just give yourself grace because there are going to be certain occasions where you're like I can do it but I or I can't do it or what have you and you're going to be hard on yourself you just got to give yourself grace and yeah. just be flexible with whatever roles it is what it is <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I know I just thinking that like also the world has changed a lot too yeah. I think from like probably during when you first had your first kid you know, I, I I was assured by the judge for this trial that the City Hall of Philadelphia actually has nursing rooms now because I'm thinking like, what, how am I going to nurse my kid during the trial? Mm -hmm. I was thinking, I actually was stressed out. I'm like, how am I going to pause a trial so I can go? Because sometimes it takes like 
just to get the, they, even though they say it starts at nine o'clock, I've had it where like, they don't even pull the jury in until 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And then you have to give them lunch. You have to give your jury lunch. That that yeah. that, that That is you or you're, that's horrible. <laughs> so it's like all those breaks you think, but that's the things that were like stressing me out when I came back. I'm like, how am I going to do this? This is crazy. So I, I think that like the technology and people like, I'm not saying we're there yet, which is a shame since we're in 2023, but like there are more movements to try to make it easier for, for mothers and things like that. I mean, I remember when, when I had my older daughter, one of the reasons I opted not to nurse, I, there was a a lot of reasons, but one of them was like, how am I going to do it practically? Like during a dip. And, and then I, I also had this pic, this image in my mind of like, you know, just someone walking in my office like while I was pumping and I was, and I worked with mostly men and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I am just not doing this <laughs> because I was like, just the thought of it is giving me a lot of anxiety. I'm just cutting it out. <laughs> Thinking back, like how, how did each of you though, and, and this is kind of more like advice for Wendy, how did each of you like work to achieve some time for yourself? You know, because that is such a big challenge too. And that's something that we, we all need because you can't be all work, all mom and like, no, you, you know, <laughs> like that's not going to make you very happy. Like, you know, one of my things is like, I, I've always prioritized exercise because that I just, it makes me feel good. It makes me happier. And then I'm like happier with my, like, I feel better about myself because I feel healthy. Um, So like I, I since my kids were very little, like, like weeks old, I just made, I was like, I need to have an hour a day that is mine to, to exercise. Sometimes there was a kid hanging on me or sometimes there was, you know, someone right next to me. And sometimes there's a kid like helping me out on my push-ups or whatever it may be. But I, I tried to prioritize that. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to throw it to Victoria first, but cause since, you know, your son's a, cl- a little closer in, in, in age, but you know, what did you do to, to make sure you had time for yourself, especially because you're in the midst of a pandemic with a toddler too? <laughs> um, I had to learn to get over like whatever, I don't even know where it came from, but I had this guilt that like, I, I can't take time for myself. Like I have to work. And when I'm not working, I need to be with my son and my husband and do all this stuff. But then I would find like I was getting really overwhelmed and I just had to ask my husband for that time. Um, I'm a hiker. Um, and so I love to go hiking and that time that I get a couple times a week to just go alone is just incredible for my mental health and also, um, my speed, because I love to take Wyatt with me as much as I can, but I hike at a very different pace than what a toddler does. (laughs) And here there's like big animals and steep drop-offs and things that like, I can't just zone out and just be like, look at that tree or look at that flower, you know, like, so just asking for that and not feeling guilty about it. I think that's like the best thing that you can do for you. Yeah. We just got a hiking backpack. Oh, we're going, we're going on June from June 8th to the 11th. We're going to go down to Seneca rocks, West Virginia. Okay. So, you know, I told you like those seasons change. So Mm -hmm. Wyatt lived from like six months into like almost two in my backpack. And then we moved out here um, and things were just a little crazy. And like, one of the things that's really emotional for me is like, I didn't realize that the last backpack hike with him was my last backpack hike. And it must have been in Tennessee. Um, because since we've been here, he just hit the ground running. And like, that's one of those things I'm like, I will never get to carry him in that backpack again. So just share that. I'm excited for you that you okay. are going to get that experience yeah. <laughs> too. Because it was just, you know, he and I would just go in the woods and we would look at the birds and they're so close to you right here. You hear them breathing and it's just, it's just really special. I know you're an outdoor person like I am too. So it's just, I just hope he really likes it. <laughs> we're yeah. not sure he's going to like it yet. Yeah. So we're just like, I'm like, maybe we should just, I take him in a stroller for a walk. But I'm like, Oh yeah. We should just start putting them in the backpack and mm-hmm. just see. Yes. And it's easier. So <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear about your adventures. Okay. Yeah, Cause when they, when they get older too, we just were hiking a few weeks ago and it's just like, like, I'm just the whole time watching my kids feet. Cause there's so many like things for them to trip over I'm like stay are you looking are you looking like mom just relax I was like I know but if you fall and you scrape your knee then you're gonna cry and I don't have band-aids and then it's gonna be this whole thing and we're in the middle of the woods and it's gonna be really annoying so can you just watch where you're walking (laughs) 
So <laughs> how about you, Tori? Um, I guess, you know what? It depends on the season of each kid. Mm -hmm. um, so at certain points, I had anxiety taking time for myself right? Yeah. Having that decision because it's like, okay, I'm at work all the time or, you know, and I'm only available a couple hours out of the day for the kids. So it's just like, well, the only time that I could take for myself was at night. And then so <clears throat> when they're sleeping or what have you, even though I should have been sleeping. So um, there were points in time where I actually found myself not taking time out for myself and it was a little bit easier but knowing that seasons change there are other opportunities for me to take time out that was less anxiety less stressful so where I can enjoy my time <laughs> either alone or away or on vacation or what have you so um yeah, I guess it just depend, literally depend on what, where they were in their life or what have you and where I was in my anxiety and leaving them behind or, you know, not spending time. So I always had that balance issue, especially when they were little, um, because my concern was um, just about being present. And so I decided like there was times that, okay, I'm okay with not taking time for myself and giving the kids time, but it was my choice. So that was my time to give. So once I realized it was my time to give, I could adjust and be okay. Yeah. So Wendy, have you been able to like carve out some time for you? Cause you were a runner, like you, you, you know, you, um, you had a lot of, you know, you had a lot of stuff, but like, you also like, you, you're all in all the time with like work and everything. So I'm like, where's Wendy's time? <laughs> it's, it's very few and far between. <laughs> so it's interesting. I, uh, so when Bryson was born in the fall, it was nice that we could take a walk. Mm -hmm. And Brian was home, my other half, Brian was home for the, for a month. So that was nice when we go on these like family walks, but I made it a priority when Brian left to go back to work to take a walk every day with Bryson, uh, barring that it was like pouring, wasn't pouring or, you know, not, we luckily we had a mild winter because that helped me. I actually had, uh, I still kind of do postpartum anxiety, mm -hmm. um, which Victoria's heard of me talk about and it. it took me by surprise because uh, I didn't have that before. And I, it's horrible. I had forced myself to eat and, and deal with all that. So I'm kind of coming out of this, but Tuesday night. I'm very excited. I'm actually going to a book club Ooh. in the city. Uh, and I read actually the read the book. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's not a monthly thing. Cause I'm like, it's okay. I, if you didn't read the book, you can just go and drink yeah. the wine. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I just, can't, I could have a glass of wine, but it's just like, I could read it. Like and these are other moms and stuff too. But, um, but it's like, since it's not a monthly thing, I'm like, okay, this is good. Because like, if I read only like a page or two, or, you know, like a couple pages, I could actually finagle that into, into my schedule a little bit. So I'm not the ones, and they don't, and so, you know, some people I'm sure didn't read it or, or not. It wasn't a long book either, but uh, I'm excited. It is a little stressful because, you know, my other half's going to have to put my son to sleep and I'm going to have to finagle, like making sure everything's good to go before we leave. I get the day ready too the next day. Like I have to get all my bottles ready for daycare you know, make sure the sheets filled out as much as I can, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I'm yeah, excited. And, I mean, and that's, that's one thing though. Like, I think we all talk about quite a bit though. It's like the, all the, the mental load that we carry on a daily basis of like all the things that need to happen and the prep, the actual prep you need to do. Like, look, like, honestly the kids wouldn't have their field trip forms go in or the you know or or like like I have to go do library duty later today like there's so many things that like we have to do that we carry on our ourselves and I remember even like that sort of prep to Wendy like when I would travel I'd be like okay I need to write out everything that's happening every day and what needs to happen for them to go to daycare or go to school so it all will happen while I'm out of town for two days you know and it's exhausting <laughs> It is exhausting. And it doesn't, it, uh, sadly, it doesn't get much better as they get older because then now you have sports and then you have, they have to, they have to travel this and then you have to, you're like, oh, do they have the shin guards? Are they, is their uniform clean? Do they like, do they need new shoes? Oh my, or maybe I need to buy new shoes. Oh, these shin guards are getting out of whack. Maybe we need to buy more shin guards. Is your stick too long? Do we need, like, it never ends. 
no and we so why it is a t-ball dropout this year um so we tried um but all practice she would just hear why it why it why and it was he was the one playing in the grass trying to hold the coach's hand like look there's Aww. a squirrel you know and so like it was it was so cute but the it was really hard because the age range on the team was three to seven and that is like a really big age range and so he was kind of like holding the kids back but like that was what even though I played sports growing up I wasn't prepared for like when your kids get into things how much your life is going to change because even this little t-ball uh little league it was practiced four to five days a week what? before games yes and I'm like they're th- well my son's three he's the only three-year-old but I'm just like this is crazy and it was just you know I wanted it for him because I wanted the socialization. Mm-hmm. Um, we do a ton of things with him, but since he's either usually with, you know, my husband or myself, I want to get him out. Thought we'd have these grand plans of like this great stuff. Um, but now that he's a T-ball dropout, like this summer, I know next year he'll either be in soccer or we'll try again. And like, just cherish this time, Wendy, like when you don't have this crazy schedule like that, even though like work is crazy, because I was not prepared for like how your life will change when your kids get involved yeah. in activities. Yeah. It was very eye opening. Yeah. And, and it, them. Yeah. And it kind of goes in stages though, too. Like, you, like, I feel like Wendy right now you're in like in the stage that you, it, it's very not isolated, but you really just, it's like you're at home and you're doing your own thing as your just your, your unit. Uh, Cause they don't really make friends. They're too young to make friends, you know? And then it turns into like the birthday party circuit that every weekend you have a birthday party to go to and the first two are exciting. And then it becomes be torturous. <laughs> <laughs> and then then you run into the, the, the drop-off birthday party which is glorious when you have the drop-off <laughs> birthday party <laughs> but then it's that right at that same time you have the sports that kind of come in too so then you have practices and games and then it, like and then it gets nuts and then and then there's always homework <laughs> and then later where i'm not at yet then it's like projects <laughs> So again, it, it, it goes with the seasons, <laughs> but like mm-hmm. part of me misses the birthday party circuit. Like I miss mm-hmm. that going to pump it up for two hours on a Saturday was the activity or going to the grocery store was enough to occupy a Saturday. It's like, oh, okay. We went, had a birthday party with the grocery store. We had a good day. Like, you know, <laughs> but mm-hmm. and later when it changes and you have so many things and you basically need like a, a diagram to track out where you're going to be and how you're going to get there. Um, so yeah, enjoy your seasons <laughs> because it changes. <laughs> well, I tell you, I mean, I, I really wanted to do this podcast, especially with moms. We did one a couple of years ago when our own moms came on and my mom came on. It was great. Yeah, so great. I picked you guys because I was like, you guys are incredible moms. It really is. This is not only is being a mom hard. And I know that I knew that before I had a, a baby, but it's just that even in what we do in our industry and all this stuff is just, I think it's you, I think it's a little bit unique. Maybe it's just me, but it's like, you know, sometimes I'm like, how in the world do you do this? You know, because it's not like people are always going to have comp. They're always going to have claims. There's always going, it's not going to ever end the works. I mean, I would have knock on wood because I'm like, this is how I pay for my family and support my family. But it's like, the work's never going to end. The work is always going to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, you guys talk about the seasons changing, enjoy it, setting boundaries, being flexible. And I'm like, you know, I hear all this and I need to process it. And I'm doing, I'm trying, I'm really trying, but it's hard. And it's just amazing to look at all of you, all three of you, you know, and see like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. You can, and you are. You guys can well. do this. I'm like I can do, I can do this. <laughs> You're doing it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm doing it. So, but thank you. I mean, yeah. uh, really, thank you. Yeah. Um. And so before before we close up, though, um, I'm gonna change kind of a question I ask of most guests to to make it more pertinent to this topic. But I'm gonna start with you, D- Doreen, since you you had the benefit of earlier having the later start. But if you could give you know, yourself, like your younger self, some advice, um, or, or something that you would do differently. If you could tell yourself, your younger self, something to do differently in in your growth as a mother, what would it be? Live out loud and live in my truth. So when I had my child 25 years ago, um, let's just say when I was pregnant, I waited until I was eight and a half months, you know, to tell my employer that I was pregnant. Like, I, I so it was, 
I, I, I'm, I'm large going in. I'm like, no, I'm just fat. I'm gaining weight and trying to, you know, hide it or <laughs> what have you. But, too many donuts, too many donuts. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it was always, um, I felt like it was not taboo, but something that was going to hold me back in my career. And if I didn't do or operate in the way that I did prior to having the kid. So, and when I say operate and, and going forth and just telling my younger self to operate my truth, it was, it's okay to say, yes, I can, or no, I can't, or no, I won't. So, and it's okay for me to say, well, you know what? My priority lies with my child and I'm going to be home by six o'clock. Um, so I would tell my younger self to just be okay with it, be flexible and be proud of having the career, having the baby and being able to do it. And, you know, and I guess as I got older and my second child came along and just allowing people to be supportive of my process in not only in my career, but also raising my children. And sometimes those people that, um, are assisting you along the way, they can help you in both areas. So yeah. just being a little bit more open to that. I love that. How about you, Victoria? Uh, definitely like what Doreen said about the flexibility um, that once I kind of um, embraced that a little bit more, uh, life got a little bit easier. It's It's more fun for me to go on that hike with my son and my husband or our friends after I get done working versus like cleaning up the you know mess on the floor that'll be here tonight when he goes to bed mm -hmm. um so embracing that and then also too like um like really just not caring what other people think and just being involved and like getting involved in that play with your kid when they want you to play because like hearing that right now like that mommy come play with me um even if it's something silly like we play this game with our friends called lava shark at the park the other people probably think we're crazy but the kids love it we chase them and we chomp them and just like to hear those laughs that are coming out of them right now is just priceless and just to soak all that yeah. up yeah i i think some advice i would give give my myself is it's kind of similar to what you said like it'll be there later just yep. like because i remember the stress when i was like my kids were really young being like feeling very pulled with between work and home. And I, I, if I could tell myself now, just, just turn off the work now. You don't, you don't need it right now. It's, it's, it, and I'm still guilty of it, but I'm a little bit better about it now. Um, so, you know, so Wendy, <laughs> what advice will you give Wendy? <laughs> young Wendy, young Wendy um, was a long time ago too. Uh, don't worry. Wendy <laughs> arriving to the hospital, still answering emails. <laughs> <laughs> or Wendy on maternity leave still working. Maybe I stressed out. This is really funny. It's a true story. I'll tell you. On our way to the hospital, and that whole day was stressful because I had to be induced. And uh, but there it kind of is like it gave a time frame of when you were to be called. And you know, I call because they don't know how many people are coming into the you know the maternity ward to deliver, so you might not be in that time slot. So I call I an hour past had gone by. I didn't hear anything, you know, and I'm like, do I need to show up to the hospital or am I just stay at home? I mean, he, I don't know what I'm doing. And they were like, oh, we had a couple, we had two people come in, just call back at six or whatever. But I, on our way, you know, cause I'm trying to, you know, my other half, he's, he's stressed. He's, he has, a, he's anxiety. You know, you can tell he's trying to be calm for me, but he's just like, okay, you know, like we're all sitting there and I'm thinking we're not even going in today. But I forgot to take a one. My friends wanted like one last picture before I go, and at right before we get to the hospital, like you have to check it, you got to get the gown and all, you do all the paperwork and stuff. I'm like, oh my god, Brian, go get my phone, go get my phone. What are you doing? And he's like, what? I'm like, everybody wants to see one last picture before I deliver. Not like not naked. I mean, I have like a gown. Like they just want to see the last baby bump. I'm like, I gotta take a picture. <laughs> That's how you know how tightly wound you are sometimes. <laughs> it's like those things like, oh my God, I forgot to do. And it's like, really? That's not, that's not important. Like you're about to deliver a baby. Who cares if your yeah. friend's dealing that, you know, baby bone picture. Yeah. So 
Oh, did, so did you take the picture or no? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's one thing I actually I do regret. I did not take a lot of pictures of me pregnant because I was so like in my head about like how I looked. And now I'm like, oh, why didn't I take more pictures? Like, why? I, I was just so weird about it. I didn't take a ton and I'm not on social media, you know, how I feel about that. Like I, I do like Din or whatever, but I'm going to post that on LinkedIn. But um, no, I would think, and I'm trying to, to, to live this. this, everything that you guys said, it's like, you just have to let go. Like, you know, I'm, I'm an older mom. Um, it took me a long time to have, to get to this point. I mean, he is, what do people call it? The rainbow baby. He is my rainbow baby. Like he, this is a miracle. And I, I, we, we are blessed. Like he is the happiest little guy, the cheeks. I show you guys the pictures, like his <laughs> cheeks and stuff. You just, he's, in, he's thriving. And, and that's, that's what makes my day. That's my world. Like that's, you know, I have to like, you know, tell my younger, I would tell my younger self, I gotta tell my older self, give, give yourself grace. Like mm-hmm. it's okay. If you don't get to this, that, that, that very second, you know, and definitely should have listened. I should have gotten a housekeeper. i'm like i'm shedding like a pet i didn't realize you really do lose your hair oh yeah um plus i have a kid pulling my hair and i'm like i'm like a pet right now and i'm like i constantly and i have dark hair too and i'm like oh my god i gotta vacuum my floors because i don't want my kid like eating the hair or anything like that so you you probably should get that just do that once a week (laughs) No, we do. I do. But oh. I mean, it's just like, but like, you know, you look at your house and I'm like, I should have probably got a house key, like cleaner or something like that. Help one me thing out. I, one last I, thing off my list. One thing I still want is someone to come and fold the laundry and put it away. If yes. I, I <laughs> that, that is just my dream. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the worst. I could, I, my, in my room right now, I have three hampers folded ready to put away I try to tell the kids they got to put away and it I it makes it causes Doesn't so many resonate. arguments and then mm-hmm. I got three three buckets that need to be folded if I could just have someone just come and do it for me it'd be great <laughs> I'm still waiting for my personal chef that's what I'm oh uh, yeah <laughs> that too that too <laughs> but your husband cooks as but he does dinner like and that's it but I'm like we eat other times of the day or <laughs> oh the breakfast and lunch part too that's awesome yeah all the meals <laughs> and because the, the personal chef cleans do yeah. cleans up after the right yeah. the, the, and they the, probably the, buy the ingredients yeah. <laughs> it's great. a whole package <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway I want to thank you guys so much for, for joining us, Wendy. I thank you so much for inviting Victoria and Doreen to come on. This was such a great idea. Um, and, you know, I'm so happy to ha- have you guys on and we should have you back and we'll talk more about claims and comp claims another time. We'll, we'll pivot to like more serious things. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. And happy Mother's Day. Yes. Happy Mother's Day to everybody. Thank Mother's you. Day. Thank you for having us. Happy Mother's Day.